Hello again. My name is Miss Pearl Hernandez. I'm your speech therapist. And hi, I'm Miss Shira. I am your OT. Welcome back to our little show. All right, so we always start our class by saying our highs and hellos to the people in the room. So if you can go ahead and greet our wonderful OT, you can use your hello, hi, or what's up. I like to use what's up. What's up, Miss Shira? Hey, and I'm going to say hi, Miss Pearl. Second, how are you feeling today? I like to use these words on the left and I can touch them and say, I feel hungry. I feel hungry because I'm ready to have. Dinner. How about you, Miss Shira? I feel tired because I didn't really get enough sleep last night. How about you? How are you feeling today? Touch, I feel. So let's get our body ready for our class today. Remember that our whole body listens from our eyes, our mouth, our ears, our hands, feet, and our brain are all ready. Miss Pearl, what do you say? Ooh, what do you oh. say we get our bodies ready? Let's sure, do a little bit stretch. Okay, so let's all stand up. And if you're at home, go ahead and stand up. You can even bring your brother or your sister to stretch with you. Let's reach up all the way to the sky. Hands up, 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 up. Bring your arms really close to your ears. Stretch all the way. Can you even stand on your tippy toes and try to touch the ceiling? Oh, there we go. There you are. How about hands out to the side? Out, out, out to the side. Good. Reach them wide open that they're almost leaning back, back, back. And now give yourselves a nice big stretch, a big hug, a big hug, tight, tight squeeze. That's it. One more stretch. We're going to take our hands, reach up, and then touch our toes all the way down to the floor all the way down. I don't see you. Do you see me? Oh, nice big stretch. Oh, there we are again. Good. I think now our whole body is going to be ready to listen and to get working. So this is what we are learning today. We are going to read the book called The Feelings Book. So we're going to learn about all these wonderful and colorful words to describe how we are feeling. If you find your speech sound, go ahead and you can pause anytime and say it with your grown up. We're going to follow directions as Ms. Shira guides us in doing lots of different um, or drawing our own feeling faces. And lastly, we're going to answer our hows and whys. And for some fine motor skills that we're going to work on, we're going to work on writing our lines, shapes. And if you're up to it, letters and words too. We're going to work on copying designs that we see on our board, on our screen. And of course, just like we always do, we're going to try to use our two hands together. And we're going to work on our control of our fingers and hands to make sure that we cut and color inside our boundaries. But first, before we get started with our feelings book, let's right so take a second you can even pause this video for a sec to get what you need you're going to need a paper with lines and a pencil if you are up to writing words and sentences you can go ahead and we're going to do our we're going to copy some sentences so that we know what we're doing for our for the session but if you're not up to writing you can either have a grown-up write the letters for you and then you can trace them or you can skip ahead to the feelings book. So right now for our writing activity, we are going to just make sure to remember that when we write our words, we're writing our letters on the line, that we keep spaces between our words, and we always like to size our letters properly. Our tall letters are tall and our small letters are small. All right, let's see what we're gonna go ahead and copy. I always make sure that my name is at the top of my paper. So on the top line, go ahead and write your name. Now on the next line, I didn't do anything. Do you know why? I like to leave spaces 
between my writing lines. I like to use a line and then skip a line. This way, my writing comes out neater and my teacher can read my work. So here are the sentences that we are going to be writing today. You can go ahead and read with me. Go ahead and point to the words and let's read the words together. Today, I will learn about feelings. I will draw faces. So you can go ahead and hit pause on your video or recording, whatever we call it now, and take a few minutes to write these sentences. Okay, and just remember, we have our reminders on the side of our screen. Letters touching the line, spaces between your words, tall letters tall, and small letters small. All right, and as soon as you're done, go ahead and unpause so we can continue. Oh, Miss Pearl, you're going to have to start again because you're muted. There you go. Hello. The book that we are going to read, the feelings book. Okay, so notice on the cover of the page, I see some faces. Maybe these faces are, some, are already familiar to you. Can you name a couple of these faces? You can use the sentence, I see. I can say, I see a happy face. Can you give me one sentence that you, one face that you see, Ms. Shira? What is one face that you recognize? I see a sad face. Good. So notice how Ms. Shira is putting these two words together, sad and face. Sad face. So we're going to use those kinds of describing words throughout the book. Are you ready to read? So, so grown-ups, when you are reading this book with your little ones at home, make sure to use that beautiful nonverbal language, meaning that beautiful tone, and match it with the emotions on the page. The Feelings Book by Todd Parr. Sometimes I feel silly in touch with me i feel silly look at that silly face his tongue is out his hands are by his face goes blah, 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 blah. can you show me your silly face i can <laughs> good job mashira sometimes i feel cranky Ooh, look at her eyebrows. They're coming together. She's got a big frown. Can you think of another word that, that we can use for cranky? You can say, I feel. What's another word, Ms. Shira? Hmm. I feel mad. That's right. Mad or angry. That is a mad face right there. Sometimes I feel scared. Eek! Look, what do you see? I see a scared mouse. Ah! The cat is scared of what? The cat is scared of the cat. Sometimes I feel like standing on my head. I feel upside down. Can you go upside down, Ms. Shira? Oh, I might be able to, but I'm not going to show you. Because <laughs> I can't. I can't go upside down. Sometimes I feel like reading a book under the covers. I feel like reading. Oh, look, I see a cat. The cat is on the bed. Sometimes I feel 
like celebrating my birthday, even though it's not today. I feel festive. What does the word festive mean? Does it mean you like to party? Or does it mean you like to swim? I think it means you like to party. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I see I like to party. You like to party? Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm, I see balloons. I see hats. These are all things I see at a party. Sometimes I feel brave. I feel brave. What do you see, Miss Shira? I see a superhero. <laughs> Can you show me your superhero face? Superhero. superhero. What does brave mean? Superheroes are brave. Mm. If you were a brave superhero, would it be because you would? If you are brave like a superhero, does it mean that you are not scared or does it mean you are not hungry? Hmm. I means you are not scared. Superhero. Sometimes I feel like looking out the window all day. I feel interested. What do you see outside your window? I see a bumblebee out my window. What do you see outside your window, Mishira? I see flowers outside my window. Sometimes I feel like dancing. I feel wiggly. Can you show me your wiggly bodies? Whoop, whoop. Wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like making mud pies. Ooh, look at that face. How does he look? He looks dirty. I feel dirty. What's some other words that you can describe, that you can use to describe his face? Let's think, think, think. Mishira, do you have any ideas? I think his face looks messy. Messy is a good word. Some of my other friends from class said his face is muddy mm. or dirty. Sometimes I feel like I have a tummy ache. Oh, I feel sick. Look at his belly. His belly hurts. He's got a sad face. Why do you think this dog feels sick? Look at the picture and look for clues. Is it because... He ate too many cheeseburgers? Or is it because he ate catnip? I think it's because he ate catnip. That's for the cat. Uh-oh. Sometimes I feel like holding hands with a friend. I feel friendly. Are you friendly in school? Can you name some of your friends? Who is your friend at school? Who is your friend at school, Miss Shira? Miss Pearl, you are my friend at school. Yay! That makes me feel so good. Sometimes I feel lonely. Look at that fish. How many fish do you see? I see one fish. Lonely means, does lonely mean you're by yourself? Or does lonely mean you're with friends? 
That's right. Lonely means you're by yourself. Sometimes it can make you feel sad if you're by yourself. Sometimes I feel like yelling really loud. I feel noisy. Can you show me how to make a loud voice? Ready, set, go. Sometimes I feel like staying in the bathtub all day. I feel clean. It's nice to feel clean. Look, this girl is so happy she's clean. She, where is she? She's in. She is in the tub. Sometimes I feel like trying something new. I feel adventurous. This boy is trying out skating while walking his dog. That's something new. Sometimes I feel like dressing up. What is she wearing? Let's start. What is she wearing on her body? She is wearing, hmm, are those pants or is that a dress? You're right. Dress. She is wearing a dress. What else is she wearing on her face? Hmm, Ms. Shira, what do you think? Well, I see that she is wearing a bow. Good, she's wearing a bow. And even the dog is wearing something cool. What is the dog wearing? You're right. He is wearing sunglasses. Sometimes I feel like doing nothing. I feel bored. Sometimes I feel like camping with my dog. I feel outdoorsy. What else do, can you do outside? Hmm. I like to go for a walk outside. How about you, Mashira? What do you like to do outside? I like to ride my bike outside. How about you at home? What do you like to do at home or outside? Sometimes I feel like crying. <laughs> I feel sad. Why do you think this boy is sad? Let's look for clues. I see an ice cream cone and some ice cream scoops on the floor. I think he is sad because his ice cream fell on the floor. Sometimes I feel like eating pizza for breakfast. I feel hungry. This girl is so hungry. She can eat pizza for breakfast. Sometimes I feel like kissing a sea lion. I feel loving. Who are some loving people in your life? My mom likes to give me kisses. She is loving. Who are some other loving people in your life, Mashira? Some other loving people in my life are my kids and my sisters and my dad. Sometimes I feel like a king. I feel strong. I feel strong and mighty and powerful like a king, because a king is a leader. 
So no matter how you feel, don't keep your feelings to yourself. Share them with someone you love. Love, Todd. So it's nice to share your feelings with your friends and your families. There's lots of different emotions that we can express. Some of them might be happiness, some of them might be some sadness, but always remember that our family and our friends are there to help us feel better. So here are some tips for home for our grown-ups at home. So again, use that emotional language when you're having that conversation with them. Try your best to label your own feelings and your child's feelings by using some, using them in your own language. Like say, I feel so proud seeing you do your work or say, you look so tired from all that playing outside. For a lot of our friends with some communication difficulties, emotions are a very abstract concept. So the more that they're able to label these emotions, as they are feeling it, the more that they understand themselves. When you're reading a book or you're watching a movie, talk about their face, their face and their body language so that they can understand how um, these characters are feeling and their perspectives. Um, have your little ones use scripts like I feel or even use visuals um, on a, like a mood board on your fridge and kind of Use that to help them have a couple of choices when they're explaining how they're feeling. Another fun thing that you could do is go in front of a mirror and make all of these fun, crazy faces. And you can say, show me a, show me a silly face and things like that. Here's the communication board that you can use at home. You can say, I feel. Have all these wonderful words to describe how they're feeling. And there's also sad and happy here at the bottom, even hurt. All right, so now we're gonna make our own feelings faces. Here's what you're gonna need. So if you need to take a pause, go ahead and press pause and go and get those tools that we need for our feelings faces craft activity. You're gonna need a piece of paper, something to write with, I like to use like a black marker, something nice and dark that comes out thick, and some colored crayons, and a pair of scissors. You ready? Here we go. So we are going to make four different feeling faces. So the first thing you need to do is draw four circles on your paper, okay? Around and close. We start at the top and we are gonna draw our four circles. And you wanna make them big enough so that you can draw your faces inside those circles. So you don't want to make them too tiny. And remember, let's make sure that we're holding our marker nicely between our thumb and pointer. And we have our paper nice and steady on a table or another surface like the floor or your fridge so that your helper hand can help hold your paper down while your writing hand draws your circles. Once you have your four circles on your paper, you wanna color each circle a different color. The four colors that I picked because I thought that they matched the feelings that we're gonna do are yellow, blue, purple, and red, you know it. So if you don't have all those colors, go ahead and choose your own, that's fine too. But these are mine, these are the ones that I chose, okay? So you're gonna go ahead and color, pick up the, pick up the crayon and remember, we, some of us think that broken crayons are no fun, but guess what? Your OTs love broken crayons. Do you know why? Because that helps you hold your crayon between your fingers. It keeps us from doing this, okay? We don't wanna hold our crayon in a fist, we wanna hold it nice and neatly between your thumb and your first two fingers, okay? So go ahead and hold your crayon neatly and color in those circles, staying inside your black border, okay? Stay inside that dark border and make sure to color in all the empty spaces so that your circle is fully, fully colored. Once you finish one, move on to the next and the next and the next. 
So you've got four colored circles. And if we're going too fast for you, you know what to do. Just pause us for a little bit until you catch up, okay? Now, once your circles are all colored, go ahead and grab those scissors. Let's just do a quick review of how we hold our scissors. So I want both thumbs up. So two thumbs up, thumbs up on your scissor and thumbs up on your paper. So let's make sure that our thumb is in the, in the little hole and our fingers share the big hole. I just wanna make sure everybody can see. Thumb on top gets the little hole and fingers share the big hole at the bottom. Keep elbows nice and tucked in at your side and hold your paper to cut around your circle, okay? My helper hand's gonna help me turn the paper as I cut so that my scissor hand doesn't have to do this, okay? We want our scissor hand to stay nice and close to us and our helper hand's gonna help turn and cut our circles. Once you finish coloring, once you finish cutting out your circles, it is time to draw our, our, our different feeling faces. So let's see which faces we're gonna draw. All right, we've got four different feelings on these faces. The yellow one, if you can read it, read the word underneath it, even if you can't, I bet you can guess. Yep, that's your happy face. So we're gonna draw two circles for the eyes and then a curved mouth for our smile. How about the blue one? Hey, Ms. Pearl, what do you think? What does that face look like? I see a sad face. Oh, yes. You can see it by that mouth. That is not a smile, right? That is a curved line going the other way. So go ahead and make those two circle eyes and a sad face, a curved line down. All right, that next purple face, show me it on your faces. That's a surprise face. So that's funny, I don't even see a curve for the mouth, I just see one circle. So make your two eyes and a circle and look at those eyebrows curved up, two eyebrows. You can even, I'm sure you can make a surprised face while you're drawing your surprised face. Oh, and that last red one, that's your mad face. So you have two slanty diagonal lines going down for the eyebrows and you've got that curved line for your sad or mad face. And now you have your four, your four different feeling faces. I didn't get to cut mine out yet, but here are my faces. All right. I bet yours look amazing. So here are some ideas of what you can do now that you have these different faces cut out, okay? I first put mine I found some clothespins around my house and I was able to stick it on. So I love clothespins because you can use that to strengthen your grasp, your pencil, your writing grasp to pinch open and to close it on your, on your feeling face. And now we have cute little stick figures of our feeling faces. So that's one idea you can do. You can also use popsicle sticks or straws or other sticks, anything that's, anything that, that you know, that does the job. Q-tips, you name it, you can get creative. Another thing that I liked to do with it is I, I put my face on a brown paper bag, okay? And I need mine into a puppet. Here's my happy puppet. Some other ideas that you can do instead of, you can get creative instead of using crayons to color your faces, you can always cut out different color paper and you can make almost like a collage of little confetti. I started making one over here. If you look closely, you can see I cut small little yellow papers out and then I pasted it on. And if I finish it, then this could become my happy face. And that's just another great way to practice your cutting skills. Um, and of course, we love paint. We love finger paints. You can use markers, any sort of anything that you can color with. Chalk. Those are all fun and a really great way to increase your variety of practicing on all those fine motor skills. And then just some other ideas that you can do. Oh wait, before I before I forget, Miss Pearl reminds me, when she was talking about that mood board, that visual mood board, you can go ahead and use these 
as part of your mood board, right? To help to help your kids and to help your siblings describe how they're feeling, they can look at the different pictures that we just drew and that might help them be able to identify how they're feeling. Um, just a couple of other ideas. If you have Play-Doh at home, if you made Play-Doh with us the other week, you can make faces out of Play-Doh. You can roll out circle eyes. You can roll out those snakes to make smiles or to make frowns. And of course, we love Play-Doh because that works so many different skills um, for your hands and fingers. And then one last idea, which is a really fun way to get our stress out if we're feeling mad, is you can make your own stress ball by taking a balloon and putting some flour in it and then tying it up real tight. Don't overload it because we don't want it to burst. But that becomes something that you can squeeze and you can kind of play with if you're getting fidgety or wiggly or maybe a little upset. And the fun thing about that too is that you can then take that same marker and you can make a smiley face on it. All right. Miss Pearl, we can't hear you. All right, so we are all done for today. You did a great job finding those, or uh, learning about those describing words and making all of the all of your own um, feeling faces. So I give you two thumbs up. Can you all Me do too. two thumbs up? And let's do our two, two thumbs, thumbs up dance. <laughs> all right, let's sit. let's always end our class by saying our goodbyes. Let's say goodbye, Miss Shira. And goodbye, Miss Pearl. Goodbye, friends. Thank you for joining. I'll see Thank you all you. next week. Goodbye.